Good morning, Taste Buds. I'm Michelle Bernstein. The story goes that the Earl of Sandwich wanted to combine his two passions, playing cards and eating, so the sandwich was born. Join me as I birth some sandwiches on my own, today on SoFlo Taste. Welcome to SoFlo Taste here in the Goya Kitchen at J World in Coconut Creek. Who doesn't like a good sandwich? Hey, who doesn't like a great sandwich? I thought it would be fun to give you some of my best sandwich recipes here and now. So let's get cooking. I don't know when the last time I had a sloppy joe was, but I think it's about time now. So here we go. I've got some beautiful ground beef, which I've already just kind of cooked on its own, kept crumbling it, cooking it and now I'm draining it. So it's sitting here draining in a little mesh strainer. In the same pan, I didn't clean it out, I just basically poured all the fat off. I'm gonna add just one tablespoon of butter so that I can cook small diced onions and a little bit of minced garlic. Let's let that soften. So sloppy joes are made in a lot of different ways. I tried to stick as close to the traditional recipe as possible. For this, I kind of went very Americana. So once they begin to soften, go ahead and add that drained meat back into the pot. And obviously, if you don't eat red meat, you can totally use ground chicken, ground turkey, or, you know what would be actually really good here? An alternative plant-based protein. Um, whatever the brand names of whatever the plant burgers you love would totally work in this dish. No, I didn't think of that. Anyway. I got this ground beef and a few other beautiful proteins in the show, like the fish that I'll be doing next. Of course, at my friends over at Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. You can call them or you can go there at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood. Call them at 954-983-6831 and visit DelawareChicken.com. Place your order for anything you like. You can pick it up curbside. You can walk in, which is my favorite thing because you never know if you might want to pick up some of the goodies that they have there. Make sure you tell them Michelle sent you and tell them that I adore them and I miss them. Okay, I was there two weeks ago, but I still miss them. All right, so once this all kind of the onions starting to soft and the beef is cooking even a little bit more, let's go ahead and add all the flavorings to it. We've got some ketchup. tomato paste, a little bit of brown sugar for balance, Coleman's mustard or dried mustard, chili powder, and stir. Before you add the water, you really want to stir this and get that tomato paste to really cook out. Now it's starting to actually smell like a sloppy joe. Okay, add some water. Because this really needs to stew and the meat needs to get even softer and start really macerating in all those flavors. The last two ingredients that go in here are hot sauce, which is basically optional, it's up to you. I like a little bit for flavor. I don't want it to be spicy because when I remember sloppy joes, they were just very easy to eat. No flavors really popped out at me. It was just comfort food at its best. And then, of course, a little bit of Worcestershire. Because that brings out that natural meatiness. All right, now it's time to turn on our heat on our cast iron because I'm going to warm a little bit of butter to warm up my buns. Now, the buns don't have to be cooked in butter. As a matter of fact, I remember as a kid, they were just right out of the package. But now that I'm older, I know that fat makes things even better. So I'm just gonna griddle my buns. And I've used seeded burger buns. These are potato rolls with seeds. So I'm just gonna start griddling my buns like that. We're gonna cover up the sloppy joe mixture. And there you go. Come right back for some more of me putting delicious between two slices of bread after the break.
Come back to the Goya Kitchen at JA World. Michelle and the food. This is SoFlo Taste. How would you like to win a $500 Goya Seasoning to Greetings gift card? Well, of course you would. Well, your chance is waiting for you at local10.com. Just go to local10.com to register. The Goya Seasonings Greetings winner will be chosen on Monday, January 2nd, 2023. So enter today. Just go to local10.com for your chance to win Goya's Seasonings Greetings $500 gift card giveaway. Because if it's Goya, it has to be good. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. All of my recipes, including these sandwich recipes, are available on the SoFlo Show's webpage. Scan this quick response code, you'll be rocketed to the fabulous SoFlo Show's page. You'll also see the QRC on the ingredient list throughout the show. Now back to my SoFlo Taste with a taste of sandwiches. Next, I have a beautiful grouper sandwich. So fish sandwiches are so yummy. I'm actually gonna do an indoor uh, grill pan for this sandwich. And I decided to go with jerk spice. But I found a few that I love when I was shopping the other day at Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. I don't know what the brand is and I don't know what it's called, but it's red. Ask them for the jerk seasoning that's red. It's really yummy. It smells delicious. And it kind of made me hungry for jerk. So let's put all this together. We're gonna make a slaw for it, a yummy aioli or a flavored mayonnaise for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and and dust my grouper with the jerk seasoning. And there's a little bit of oil uh, with a spray inside of the grill pan. I'm just gonna get that hot. We'll make sure we put a little bit of kosher salt on there. Let me go ahead and put this in. And I think what I'm gonna do is put this right into the oven. So let me blacken spice the other side. It's a jerk spice or it's a blackening spice. It's really up to you, they have both. Right now, as I can smell the grilling as it grills, it's just really fragrant, but it's not too spicy. I can tell that by my nose. All right, so let's go ahead and put that fish right into the oven. And we will flip it once while it's cooking. All right, let's jump into the rest of the recipe. I do have brioche buns for this. It's really up to you. You can use your favorite kind of a bun. Kaiser is also a fun bun, but I love brioche buns. So I'm going to put that into the grill pan when it comes out. But for the slaw, so this is just some green cabbage that's been julienne. I'll add a little bit of lime to it. Make sure it's always fresh squeezed. If not, it just never tastes as good. A little bit of salt and just a little bit of olive oil. Go ahead and mix that up. Okay, to that I'm going to add some fresh cilantro and scallions. So for the scallions, I'm going to go ahead and cut it um, in a nice extreme bias. And when you do a bias, you basically are cutting it like so. And I like to go up pretty high up to the green, the darker green, softer part. Let's go ahead and add all these scallions to the cabbage. And then we'll take some of this cilantro and you can either just leave it, get it, leaf it, pull the leaves out, or you can just very roughly chop it. And I leave a little bit of that softer stem on higher up closer to the leaves for the more of that cilantro flavor. If you're not a cilantro lover, go ahead and use Italian parsley in its stead. All right, mix this up and there you have it. I mean, what a beautiful fresh slaw. We have a lot of flavor going on the fish, so I figured this should be a little more subdued. For the flavored mayonnaise or aioli, I've got a couple of different flavorings going on. We have a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, pinch of cayenne. If you want, you can use a little bit of the seasoning that you found if you find it at Delaware Chicken Farm or 
anywhere else that you might find some of your favorite seasonings, you can add that in too. And finally, a little bit of lemon juice. We've got the lime going in here. And if you don't have lemons at home, but you happen to have limes, just use the lime, it doesn't matter, it's okay. Just like that, a little bit of salt. Beautiful, now we have our beautiful flavored mayonnaise and we're all set to go. As a chef, I love having everything organized and ready. This is all called mise en place, means everything in its place. And I love being beautifully organized. Uh, this sandwich will also take just a little bit of leaf lettuce and some sliced tomatoes uh, to kind of hold in all the juiciness of this stuff so that it doesn't soften our bun too much. Let's take a look at the fish. We'll probably have to flip it over. Yep, so I'm just gonna do it right here. So I'm just flipping the fish over like so. I'm gonna go ahead and add my buns in the oven and then I'll flip them. All we need are about five minutes for that fish to be cooked, but I'll be back in less than that. So hurry up, come back. I still have one more sandwich in hand. Stay tuned to SoFlo Taste. We'll be right back. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. We're here at JA World in Coconut Creek, a place dedicated to our kids. For information about this instructional institution, go to jasouthflorida.org or call at 954-979-7100. Now back to my last sandwich. Let's go ahead and finish up our fish sandwiches. So on the bottom, first I did the aioli, the, the flavored mayonnaise on both cut sides of bread, a couple pieces of leaf lettuce and the slaw down. Then on the other side, on top of the aioli, I did sliced tomato, which by the way, I always season with salt and pepper, just to give it more flavor. Then we have our spiced grouper, right on top. All right, let's top that off. Okay, they're a little tall, but they're delicious. There we go. Ah, this is so South Florida to me. Look how beautiful these are. All right, let's jump right back into our last sandwich. Now this sandwich is one of my absolute favorite sandwiches. It can be called a croque monsieur or it can be called a croque madame. Madame has the fried egg on top, which will be the way I'll be making it today. Monsieur just has all the delicious things that go in the middle. So let's just jump right into it and then I can talk about it. I think I might just make one. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of my favorite mustard. Um, you can use Dijon or you can use your favorite like German sandwich mustard. So yummy. I'm just gonna add a little bit to the bread on both sides. Cause this really is a ham and cheese sandwich, but with so much more. There's different ways of making it. I'm gonna show you my way. The first thing we're gonna do is make a Mornay sauce. A Mornay sauce is a mother sauce. It's basically a bechamel with cheese, making it Mornay. So in a pan right now, I have flour and butter. I'm just gonna start heating it up until it forms a roux, which is the paste that comes from cooking out the flour and it combining with the butter. I'm happy, it's light in color. So I'm gonna remove it from the heat and go ahead and add the milk. So in goes the milk. I'm gonna add a little bit of nutmeg for traditional flavor. A little pinch of salt, it does have the cheese so I don't wanna go crazy. And just a little bit of pepper. You know, people forget to season their sandwiches. Sandwiches are just like a meal. You have to season everything, just like you would season your salad, you would season your, your fish, your chicken, your meat. So remember to season every part of your sandwich. It'll make it so much better. All right, so this bechamel is already coming together. It's pulling away from the sides of the pan. 
and see it's beautifully creamy. I'm going to cook it just another minute before adding the cheese because once you add the cheese to the Mornay you really don't want to cook it anymore because the oils from the cheese will break apart and it might turn a little greasy. All right so I have a griddle pan here just to make it a little easier than just a regular pan. What we're going to do is we're going to cook the sandwich on here. Let's add the cheese, make this a Mornay and get started with our sandwich. Now some people pour the bechamel or Mornay over the sandwich after it's done. I think we should put some inside and some outside. It also gets just the best quality ham, but you can use your favorite ham. You can also use prosciutto or jamón serrano. Um, they all work beautifully. Oh, now that's beautiful. This is a gorgeous Mornay. That's the cheese working. All right, so let's put a little bit of Mornay sauce. And I've actually never made this like this before, but why not with you all? I thought it might be fun to do so. Okay, maybe not so little. So I'm putting some on both sides of the bread. I'm gonna try not to make a big old disaster. Spread it out a little bit. I put a little more on one side than the other on purpose. Does it need more cheese? Not really. I'm gonna do it anyway. So I'm adding a slice of Gruyere. And then, like I said, I have this beautiful ham that I'm just gonna put on the inside. I'll top it. So let's go ahead and start cooking it as if it was a grilled cheese sandwich. Okay, so I'm keeping my Mornay. And now because it is a madame, let's go ahead and fry an egg. I would like to make this egg really crispy on the outside, so I'm gonna get this pan really, really hot. Okay, so I'm gonna use a little oil for the egg. All right, so the oil's hot. I can see a little bit of smoke. Let's go ahead and crack the egg. I'll add a tiny little, little piece of butter, like maybe a third of a tablespoon to caramelize the outside. All right, our egg's frying, our sandwich is cooking. Come back, let's make this masterpiece together, shall we? SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. We are in the midst of creating miracles. <laughs> just kidding, I'm just making a croque madame, which is kind of miraculous for me because I love this sandwich and never done it for TV before. So I fried an egg and I really wanted it to get super crispy, which I succeeded in, partially because I added a good amount of fat and partially because it was really hot. I've decided to get a little fancy with you guys. I have this little ring cut cutter to make a perfect round egg for the top of my croque madame. I usually try not to get so chefy with you all, but once in a while, it's kind of fun to do so. So there's my round egg. I want it to be a little more perfect, so I'm gonna use a knife. There we go. All right, so round egg, flat sandwich. Let's go ahead and take our sandwich off of the griddle. So do you like eggs and do you not like eggs? If it was my producer I was feeding right now, I would not put the egg on top. He actually doesn't like mustard, so it doesn't really matter because he probably won't eat the sandwich. So I'm gonna put the egg on top because Glenn will not be eating the sandwich. Let's go ahead and cut it right in half. Put it onto a plate. Let's add a little bit that I have left over from this gorgeous sauce and pour a little bit of this Mornay, which is again bechamel with a little bit of Gruyere. Let's top it with this gorgeous round fried egg. Oh, that makes me so happy. 
And there you have it, a beautiful croque madame. Ah, I'm, I'm very excited about this moment. So did I give you more ideas for more sandwiches? Trust me, these sandwiches are wonderful. Give one or all of them a try. Join me next week as I celebrate the festival of life. Make your eight crazy nights less crazy with some of my takes on the traditional foods for Hanukkah on the next SoFlo Taste. Time again to check in with our dear friend, Hunter Frankie, host of SoFlo Health. What have you got tomorrow afternoon on SoFlo Health, Frankie? Hi there, Michelle. Tomorrow on SoFlo Health, we'll be with Stella and some turtle friends at The Meek, which is the Marine Environmental Education Center right here in Hollywood. Then I'll meet up with SoFlo H2O host Olivia Ray to work out where we worked out, Michelle, legacy. Then we'll get some general health advice from some general practitioners. It's all right here tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. on the one and only Local 10 for SoFlo Health. Isn't that right, Stella? Yes. Thanks, Hunter. We'll be watching. So Taste Buds again, thanks for watching. Please be smart, be safe, and be vaccinated. And I'll see you here next week. Goodbye, mwah, and good taste. bread.